Last year we prayed together for Pastor Saeed Abedini, detained in Iran since 2012, and I was recently in... All right, we tried twice, folks, we didn't get it right, so I'll just tell you it was going to be Marco Rubio uh, talking about foreign policy. But joining us now is Matt Welsh, editor-in-chief of Reason Magazine and co-author of The Declaration of Independence, How Libertarian Politics Can Fix What's Wrong with America. There it is on your screen. Hello, uh, Matt. Good to talk to you, sir. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Well, you wrote a piece at Reason.com, Marco Rubio's Seven Lousy Foreign Policy Judgments. And I got to tell you, um, probably with you on one of them. So why don't, why don't we take them <laughs> why don't we take them in order? And, um, and, and, and uh, you know, you say he supported regime change in Libya. Um, I think that was done for trumped-up reasons uh, by the administration. I don't think there was any purpose to it other than some kind of whatever went on in Benghazi, weapons transfers or the ultimate goal of giving free reign to the terrorists there. I don't know what the goal was, but uh, obviously we would have been better off with Gaddafi. Well, I, you know, I don't know if we would have been better off with Gaddafi, but I think that tipping the thumb on the scales of that civil war, as often happens when we tip the, our thumb on the scales of civil wars, doesn't turn out uh, as beautifully as Marco Rubio or Barack Obama or John Kerry or anybody or Hillary Clinton in that case uh, wanted. And I think that's, I mean, take the word lousy out of it and take the pejorative out of it. If we're trying to describe Marco Rubio's foreign policy from an objective point of view, um, I think the word is interventionist. Uh, he brings to the table with that, I think he's the most well-qualified hawk, let's say, of the field that's running uh, in the presidential campaign. He's on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He speaks with great and uh, uh, passionate knowledge when it comes to freedom movement around the world in a way that I think rightly should make Barack Obama blush because he hasn't shown any such real kind of a sense of empathy or sympathy for people from Iran and elsewhere who've been trying to fight for their freedom. Marco Rubio cares about that and knows about that more, I think, than any other Republican that's running in the field. Uh, the question is, what do you do with that knowledge and with that empathy? I think in most cases, Marco Rubio says, well, America needs to be the strongest most credible force in the world, keeping the world safe for democracy, that's my words, not his, uh, and in doing so you end up uh, supporting a series of interventions which then do not come out as planned, I think from the Iraq war to Libya uh, and elsewhere. And I think as a president that's what he would bring to the table and the question is, is that a good thing? A lot of conservatives think it is. I mean a lot of people say, hey look, yeah, I like George W. Bush's foreign policy. Others, I'm not a conservative, I'm a libertarian. Uh, others think, well, I'm not really sure, even after Barack Obama's feckless foreign policy, that I'm ready to go for another eight years of Bush Cheney. Well, again, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the choice. And Hillary certainly is going to have very much trouble divorcing herself from the uh, Obama foreign policy after four years as Secretary of State, the reset button, Benghazi, the whole shebang. Um, but I think, I think, you know, given the choice between Hillary's track record, which has equaled chaos, um, and accomplishments, which really have been nothing, even her own people say, well, she made great strides for women. I don't know what that means. Um, but I, I think that, you know, God forbid, after the first is, uh, ISIS attack here in this country on a mass scale, um, people are going to say, yes, we have to get ISIS. We can be getting ISIS now. We could be destroying ISIS now. We could be giving the people begging for weapons to fight ISIS now. Weapons. We're doing none of these things. And, uh, and that's a sin. So I think fighting ISIS is, is one of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, unconditional authorization for war against ISIS, as you put down as a negative. I think most will view as a positive. Um, I think the 9-11 uh, surveillance, the post-9-11 surveillance, I think, uh, again, all it takes is one terrorist attack, and there will be one. And people are going to say, we have to keep ourselves safe. Um, military spending and the national debt, again, I think in this time, people are going to say, they don't want to hear about that. They want to hear, we are a strong country. We are, we are, you know, we, we, we are fighting to keep ourselves strong. Um, China, I think all China spends on is their military. I think they're very dangerous militarily. And uh, I think the Iraq war is something we had to do. I, we gave Saddam Hussein every chance in the world to avoid war, and he wouldn't do it. So we had to, in the wake of 9-11, uh, make sure that he wasn't in cahoots with al-Qaeda or going to support al-Qaeda. And so I, I don't see any problem with any of those things. 
Well, I mean, you you talk about the public opinion here. You're right, public opinion, especially since 2013, let's say, has trended more in, let's say, your direction. But overwhelmingly, the Iraq War is seen as one of the most unpopular wars in the history of the United States, right there next to uh, Afghanistan, and it's in its prolonged. But Hillary voted building. for it, also. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, when I'm talking about Marco Rubio, in many ways, I'm talking about within the context of the Republican right. primary, which right. I find genuinely right. interesting. It, it's, uh, I, I wrote a piece a couple of days ago talking about how Marco Rubio is basically uh, the antithesis or is at the uh, other end of the spectrum as Rand Paul right. running uh, in, in this uh, campaign. Marco Rubio will, will say that uh, Hillary Clinton was not interventionist enough, um, was not tough and strategic enough, and Rand Paul will uh, argue the exact opposite, which is pretty interesting. Democrats are not going to run on foreign policy. Policy. No, they're, they're not going to run on any policy, frankly, because they don't have any track <laughs> record. So, no, it's it's not. No, I mean, it's going to set up a great dynamic in the Republican primary. Absolutely, very exciting. And Matt, thank you. Uh, read them at reason.com. We'll speak to you again. The panels thank next, you. ladies and gentlemen.